Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah ma ba'd. In a previous clip, brothers and sisters, we've talked about ability. And the default is, as Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمْ شَهْرُ فَلْيَسُمْ Anybody who sees and witnesses the month of Ramadan, they must fast. There is no concession by default. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a separate ayah, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَىٰ سَفَرٍ فَإِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَامٍ أُخَرٍ Anybody who is traveling or anybody who is unwell, then they have a concession. These are the two default categories of people who have the concession not to fast. However, in this clip, what we want to discuss is whether it's permissible for a person who is resident, so he's not traveling, and a person who is well, so he's not unwell, he's not sick, is there a concession for such a person? Now, this is important because now, we in this plague and pandemic, we've got people who are frontline workers. They are deemed as essential in their role for the, the sake of society. They must continue working. And included in that are carers, those people who have to look after other people, irrespective of whether the person that they're caring for is Muslim or not Muslim. Is it permissible for those people to break their fast? Is there a concession for a person who is resident and well? Then the answer is found in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he says, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسُكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا Do not kill yourselves. Do not put yourselves in harm's way. Allah has surely been merciful to you. And we have a practical example from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the second year of hijrah, fasting had been legislated upon the ummah. And he continued fasting until the 10th year, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he fasted nine Ramadans. And in the 11th year, he passed away. But the point here is, is that not long after fasting had been made obligatory upon the ummah, they traveled and they went out to Badr and they didn't fast. So with this, the ulama are in agreement somewhat in saying that if there is an objective of fasting, which is that you complete the day whilst you know, abstaining from food and drink, etc., and there is another objective that you are trying to do, such as you working as a baker, perhaps, like the Hanafis have mentioned, or a person is a carer, or a person is one of those frontline workers that he needs to work. And by fasting, the objective of his role in that job will not be achieved, then it becomes permissible for that person not to fast. So with this, the ulama have said that if there are two objectives, and the objective of siyam is not being fulfilled, and the objective of the thing that he must do and he cannot delay is not going to be fulfilled either, then he can make up the day of fasting in another day and fulfill the objective of the thing which is more pressing right now. Look at the rahmah and the hikmah of the sharia. Walillahi alhamd for Islam. Now, with this, the Hanafis have mentioned, for example, there is a khabbaz, he's working next to fire. Uh, there is a sayyad, he has to work at hunting at sea, for example, or he's a hassad, that he is working as a farmer and he is bringing in his crops, etc. If he is working under the heat of the sun or he's working next to the fire, etc., if he stops working, his finances perhaps will suffer. Perhaps even in society, the ruler might even say that, no, we need bakeries to remain open, otherwise people will be hungry. He becomes one of those frontline workers. So he has to work. But then by working, he's next, he was working next to the fire and, you know, it's going to become very difficult for him to fast. So the Hanafis and the Hanbalis and others from the ulama have said, yes, it becomes permissible for such laborers not to fast. And with that, we find the contemporary ulama extending that to those people who are caring for other people. Those people who are caring, uh, and like we said, irrespective of whether the person is a Muslim or not, uh, those people who find themselves in isolation and their workload has increased, etc. It becomes permissible for such people to break their fast because they are similar to those people who are trying to fulfill an objective of uh, you know, their jobs or laborers, etc. that we have mentioned. Now, this comes under conditions, just like anything else in the Sharia. There has to be conditions in place. And from that, the ulama have mentioned, it has to be something which is going to be detrimental to his health. If it's going to be something that's going to cause a little bit of hardship, he can continue fasting, that's not sufficient. It has to be something where he cannot um, uh, receive any help from. There's no form of relief. He is doing it by himself. There's no way of lessening the workload. There's no way of putting the workload off. So perhaps he does some later on. There's no chance of him having a break, perhaps. So if he has a break, he is able to have a nap, perhaps, or something, and then come back and then, you know, carry on and fulfill the objective of Siam as well as the role. So the ulama have mentioned that uh, there are conditions to this necessity, but if he finds himself in that necessity, then he's able to break his fast. 
a branch off this now, Ibn Uthaymin, rahimahullah, has mentioned, as well as others from the ulama, have said that it becomes permissible for a person to break his fast and not fast if he is going to fast a very long day and he fears for himself and his own well-being, etc., because of the length of the day. He said, rahimahullah, لو شق الصوم, if fasting causes a great deal of difficulty and a great deal of harm, hardship to the extent that he is going to become unwell because of fasting or uh, he could even possibly even die because of fasting في أيام الطويلة مشقة غير محتملة and is a difficulty that he can't bear فإنه يجوز الفطر هنا then it becomes permissible for that person to break the fast for that day so that's a branch of ability for those people or inability should we say for those people who are resident and well and another branch from the Masail which comes off that that the ulama have mentioned, which is that if is a person, if he has taken the concession, is a person allowed to enjoy and continue eating and drinking for the rest of the day? So say he has taken the concession, he's broken his fast. Can he continue eating and drinking for the rest of the day? Now what seems to be the correct opinion is, is that if a person has broken his fast for a particular reason, then he, only then can he continue eating and drinking for the rest of the day. So for example, say he leaves his city and he's travelling, and he's travelling for the rest of the day, then he can continue eating and drinking for the rest of the day. But let's say, for example, a person is unwell, and he has a meal, and he drinks some water, and he takes some medication early in the morning, and now he is well. He, there, there is no reason for him not to fast, even though he has taken the concession. For that person, he has to make something which is known as Imsak with the ulama. He needs to refrain for the rest of the day because the day is sacred with Allah. The days during uh, the month of Ramadan are sacred with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it doesn't become permissible for a person to become relaxed on this. So what seems to be the correct p- p- position on this is that if a person has taken the concession, then he is allowed to uh, continue uh, eating and drinking as long as the reason remains. But if the reason no longer remains, then he must make Imsak. But there are two things I want to leave with. Number one, a lot of brothers and sisters who are facing inability during Ramadan, they might find themselves in a, in, a, in, a, in a state of despair. They might feel that they have lost out, especially for those women in their menses and the nifas and those people who are not well. They will feel like, you know, I wish I, I, wish I was well, I wish I wasn't on my menses so I could pray, etc. Some of the ulama in the books of hadith, in the chapter of At-Tib, of medicine, have mentioned the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And they mentioned this in the hadith of Tib because this talks about inability of Bani Adam, which is the, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Ma musiba, ma asaba mu'minan musiba, min hammin or gum. There is no difficulty or calamity or sadness that a believer uh, tastes or is afflicted with, illa, except that it will be mukaffir uh, an khataya that it will be a, a expiation for his sins so don't despair my brothers and sisters if you find yourself in a state of inability during the month of ramadan do not despair allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving you of your sins and you are attaining something for yourself without even public doing that action be patient because one of the conditions of a person attaining allah's maghfira and jannah in this month is patience and iman upon that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most merciful. So do not despair. And in actual fact, what that means is now is that instead of doing one act of worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to open another act of worship for that person that they can easily do. And this is one of the benefits of Islam, where a person might find himself in inability in one action, but there are plenty of things that the person can do as a substitute. So the first thing and my parting advice in this clip is to remind myself and everyone else that there may be times of inability, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving them of their sins. And the last thing I wanted to say is that Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah was sent a letter from his friend once, and his friend was unwell, and he sent him a letter and he said, can you give me some advice? Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah wrote back to him, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a book with him, the Umm al-Kitab, the Lawh al-Mahfuz, and in there, or the decrees that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed more than 50,000 years before he created the heavens and the earths. And in that book he has already written whether you're going to be from the people of Jannah or the people of the fire. May Allah make us from the people of Jannah. It could be that you are from the people of Jannah. This is what Ibn Taymiyyah said. It could be that you are from the people of Jannah. But your actions 
Don't push you to that level. Don't push you through the doors of Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will afflict you with calamities that he knows that you can be patient in so that you will then be pushed through the doors of Jannah and you can attain the status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already pre-decreed for you. This is because the decree of Allah is binding and it will be executed. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to get closer to him and that he accepts us from us what we put forth and he gives us sabr in the times of inability and he brings shifa to the Muslims all over the world and he protects us all. Hadha wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad.